Here's everything I wish I knew before going to South Korea as a tourist. This is specifically for Seoul. You can watch my 28 things to do in Seoul video right here. I'm gonna go over a lot of information. Let's get started. Number one, where should you stay? Seoul is massive, but there are three main areas that tourists generally stay in. If you want to be closer to the main tourist attractions like all the palaces and the famous shopping streets, stay in Incheon or the Myeongdong area, which is more up north. If you want to be around a nightlife, stay in Itaewon. There's a lot of foreigners and locals who go there. People party till the morning on weekdays. There's also a lot of shops and restaurants there. For a busy but chiller vibe, stay in Hongdae, which is known for being the youth and music, arts, indie culture area. There's a long walking street with tons of cute cafes, restaurants, and music performances. If you're staying longer than a week and don't mind moving hotels, try staying in two or three hotels in different areas just to experience different parts of Seoul. This is what I did. But for first time tourists, I recommend staying in the Insedong or Myeongdong area just because it's closer to the main tourist sites. English is not widely spoken in South Korea. It's best to learn some basic phrases if you're just visiting. You can also use a translation app like Papago or Google Translate. In non-touristy areas and restaurants, menus may not be in English, but you can use those apps to scan the menu and then it translates it to English. Here are just nine phrases that I recommend you learn and what I use the most. Hello. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. One please. Or just like one person or one of this. 하나 주세요. 하나 주세요. Sorry. 죄송합니다. 죄송합니다. Thank you. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. No. 아닙니다. 아닙니다. Yes. 네. 네. No, thank you. Or it's all right. 괜찮아요. 괜찮아요. How much is it? 얼마예요? 얼마예요? I don't speak Korean. 한국말 못해요. 한국말 못해요. I use that phrase so many times. Just remember, we're visitors. We can't expect locals to know English or speak to us in English. If you ask someone for directions and they kind of reject you, try not to take it personally. They might have been just too shy to answer back or they're just busy. At the airport, you want to do these three things. Pick up a local SIM card if your phone is unlocked. You can buy one at the airport or pre-order one on Klook.com. 10 days is about $20 USD. Get some won, which is the currency in Korea. Credit cards are widely accepted in Seoul, but I get backup won just in case. And for like food stalls that only accept cash. In general, the ATM offers better rates than exchanging at the airport, but do whatever is easiest for you. Lastly, buy a T-Money card. You can buy one at the airport or at any convenience store. It's about $2 USD. It's a card you can use to pay on trains, buses, convenience stores, some supermarkets and restaurants, even some taxis accept it. And you can use it throughout South Korea, not just Seoul. But if you don't want to get a T-Money card, you can just buy paper tickets at the train station. It takes about one hour to get to Seoul from the airport. You can take taxi, train, or bus. The first time taking public transit in a new country is nerve-wracking, but it gets easier and signs and ticket machines are in English. First, I highly recommend downloading the City Mapper app, which is in English. You can download it right now just to get an idea. It shows directions for buses, trains, and walking directions. You can't rely on Google Maps. It's not optimized to use in South Korea, especially for walking directions. So. If you look up walking directions in Google Maps, nothing will show up. The most popular apps for getting around South Korea are Naver app and Kakao map, which I still have, but in my opinion, it's less user-friendly. Okay, back to the T-Money card. You can add money to your T-Money card at a ticket machine, at a subway station, or at a convenience store. You do have to use cash. You can't use your credit card. Depending on how long you're staying in Seoul, start with 10,000 or 20,000 won. When riding on a train or bus, do not sit in a designated area for pregnant women or elderly. This is not the US. And last thing about train stations, escalators and elevators are not common. There are elevators, but you have to look for specific entrances and they're just hard to find in my opinion. So be prepared for a stairs workout. Real quick on buses, they may seem intimidating, but they're pretty easy to use. Just look for your bus number on the bus stop sign. When you hop on the bus, tap your T-Money card on the card reader. And then when you get off, tap it again. Buses cost 1200 won. Only major stops are announced in English. I use Google Maps or another map to follow the dot to know when I have to press the stop button. Uber works in Seoul. When you open your Uber app, it automatically converts to Uber T. 
Your payment information is already saved in there. You don't have to pay in person. If you do have a local SIM, you can download the Kakao T app, which is the main taxi app in South Korea. If you're a foreigner though, you can't link your credit card to the app. You'll have to pay in cash in person. Kakao taxis are more available in South Korea. You just might come across a language barrier if the driver can't find you. There's a lot of Uber drivers, but sometimes it does take a while to find one. Tipping for taxis is not common. Okay, moving on, what to pack. Here are a few essentials. South Korea uses a specific plug outlet type. It's not the same as the US. You'll have to get the plug type F, which is similar to a lot of European countries. Looks like this. We can get a world travel adapter like this one, especially if you travel a lot. Some hotels do provide a USB plug, but most don't, so make sure to have one. You can also buy one at a convenience store or at a supermarket when you get to Seoul. If you're visiting during the summer months of June to August, it does rain, so bring an umbrella or buy an umbrella out there and keep it with you because rain comes and goes. General tip, bring a hat and sunscreen to protect your skin from UV rays. And bring good walking shoes, you'll probably be walking a whole lot. Here are some random culture differences and observations. Seoul is generally safe and statistically safer than many countries. Always be careful of your surroundings, but I walked past midnight a few times and it was fine. If you need to call for help, the number is 112. Most of the restaurants I went to were self-service, which also meant returning your plates and cups to the counter and clearing out any napkins on your table. If you're unsure, just look at what other people do, which is what I did a lot. Usually pay at the counter and tipping is not common at all. Okay, for those going this summer, it gets really hot and it rains. Like I was drenched in sweat each time and when I looked at locals, they were like flawless. Lastly, here's the tea. Don't expect a local to be social or friendly to you just because you're a foreigner or obvious tourist. They're just minding their own business. If you want to make friends, you have to actively try. Go to a meetup, a club, an English exchange. At least that's my experience. And if you just want to enjoy traveling solo, that's fun too. There's so much stuff to do in Seoul, which I'll go over next. There's always something to do in Seoul. Nature sites, cultural sites, historic sites, entertainment. Here are my four favorite spots. If you only have time to visit one palace in Seoul, Go to the Gyeongbokgung Palace. It's massive and so beautiful. There's historical sites as well as nature sites and only costs about $2. Feels like a time hop and it's probably the most popular palace in Seoul. Number two, Chonggyecheon Stream. It's a seven mile stream in the middle of downtown. You can walk through it or sit on steps or even put your feet in the water. At night, there's even light shows. It's open 24 hours. Another one is the Bukchon Hanok village, which is a neighborhood of Hanoks, which are traditional Korean houses made with nature in mind. It's really, really pretty. And the last one, Namsan Seoul Tower and Park. You'll get a beautiful view of Seoul on the way up and the way down. I'd probably go there multiple times. The park is huge and the views are just so good. So I have 10 other vlogs on South Korea but I recommend watching my 28 sites to visit in Seoul next. I also went to Busan and Jeju Island and have videos on those too. Any useful links will be in the description box. And have a great time in Seoul, you'll love it. See you in the next one.